Hello everybody, this is Cheeseburger Jesus, and you know the drill. Say your read time. The same thing as last time, this may or may not be recorded over several days, meaning that um, my voice may or may not change depending on the situation. Si situation. Anyways, I'm keeping the intro a lot shorter this time. And on to the first clip. Time to write the poem for Sayori. Uh, vacation. Hair? Oh, no, that's her. Awesome. Beauty. Together. Childhood. Marriage. Peaceful. Disown. Oh. Play. Lucky. Vanilla. No, no, not melancholy. Desire. Damn it. <laughs> Mile. Email. That's probably no. That's. Damn, damn it. Keep talking. Valentine. Uh. Fantasy. No. Forgive me. <laughs> I love this music. Special. Rose. I saw you jump a little. Come down a bit. Meager. I think I got majority for Sayori. I, I think? Oh well, I, I tried. I might have to redo that. Hello, okay. Man. Looks like no one wants to be bothered today. So I'm down in the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some book that... Uh, read some of the book Yuri gave me, but I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sarah's conversation with Monica. We're probably going to seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem with is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm. That doesn't solve the problem, does it? What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sayori's taking this really seriously. It's rare to, hear, rare to hear her deliberating like this. That's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? What kind? Well, I guess we could. Have cakes! Good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. You're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it? Cupcakes speak to my creative dummy. I just love that face. If cakes it is, then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sarah is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, she can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. Can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. I probably should have played this route before. This probably should have been my first route. Back nab it. <laughs> no. I open my eyes to find Sarori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know? You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica heard. True, though. Yeah, I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> That's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh. Not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... 
the secret. I knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, sir, it's written all over you. Eh? Sorry, glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all over, all around here. I run my finger down the side of her hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. It's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stand on your collar. I try to wipe off the sand with my finger. Nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I don't really care. Hey, you meanie. But you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Huh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, she'll change your mind. This is so funny. What is? Well... I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? I, I guess. Hey, be careful. That but- uh, That- The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near your chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? It did when I bought it. If you ever buttoned it up, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? <sighs> Don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so... Ah, it does feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that. But it's so stuffy. Mm, not worth it at all. She hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Whew! That's so much better. She puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? Why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let me let you do things like this. And you take and you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. That's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine, it's a deal. I guess we really are better are better at taking care of each other than we are uh, taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so. So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. I was joking that time. It's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote? Trey, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I failed to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem? Okay, yeah. This is same. This is the same. Trey, Trey! Sayori suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with? Supplies? What for? Well, you know the festival is coming up. Me and Monica, we're gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Are you going with Trey to get supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. But I wanna go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. Okay, okay. I was, it's just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper too, okay? Okay. Ready, Trey? Yep, let's go. Sayori and I exit the clever room. I follow behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayori. What exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of the literature. Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. That sounds kind of dull. Trey, you're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems, it's about performing them. Like you say the lines of the poem like, Between my feet, 
The last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now I look in every direction, this once prosperous field before me, but a barren wasteland! Like that! Sorry. How do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh, uh, meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know. I know, I know. It just meant... It's pretty an ordinary contrast to your cute self. Don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. I'm so excited. This was going to be so much fun. Sorry spins her herself around in the hallway. Hey, Trey. This classroom is over here. This classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. Mission? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sayori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself in my room more and more. So going adventuring with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight to the closet, and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayon! So she pulls a box of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand, too! Kind of dirty, though. She starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. Uh, that's one down. Don't get distracted. We still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. I dropped one by accident. Smack! Sayori bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crowns spill all over her lap. Oh, oh, oh. You okay? My forehead. She clutches her forehead. <laughs> Jeez, Sayori. It's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hands. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. She slowly releases her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow. Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. A pump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should make you some tea. Or, I should get you some ice. Where did make some tea come from? Trey. Where would I even find ice around this time? Ah, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Even wincing from pain, she still makes a silly joke. What are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? I pat Sayori on the shoulder and run out into the hallway. I look at the nearest vending machine. What should I get? Doesn't really matter since it'll be used as an ice pack rather than a drink. But I know she likes apple juice, so I purchase that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and, uses, and is using the other one to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots when I spilled them. Sayori, here. I hand Sayori the bottle of apple juice. Nice and cold. She opens the cap and starts drinking with from it. Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? She places the bottle against the bump on her head. Things. Just bear with it, it'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crowns, so that's good. Hey, Trey. Kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? What do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like, I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on things you did. But sometimes I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump, and I would start crying really hard. And you would rush over as quickly as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop try stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in, my, in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. I don't think you realize it. But you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me even though I'm just being clumsy. You really are a sweetheart. Don't call me that. I don't really do 
do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Okay. So glad there's nothing that's changed between us. You think that it'll be like this forever? I'm honest to myself. There's no telling where we'll each end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair to make any promises, but... Well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. She has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a minute. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's gonna see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Sorry hops to her feet. She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sayori out of the classroom. She plays with her bangs to try to hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. Ah, you're back. Good timing, I was just about to start... Uh, we were just about to start with sharing our poems. There are your forehead. She's fine, don't worry about... I was playing with the crowns and smacked my forehead into the shelf. Well, anyway... Were you able to find ev any everything we needed? Uh-huh, I have it right. Sorry, frantically glances around herself. I forgot all the stuff. Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Trey. Well, Sayori. I felt to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. Okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? I guess I should grab mine. After making sure the crown box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Trey. I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. I'm not hiding anything, but your poems are so good. Yesterday's in this one too. You can't tell me that you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so... Eh? No way! Not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Eh? <laughs> Stop thinking weird things. I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. I don't know if I understand. You never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sarah? I pat Sarah's head. Hey, I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Maybe. Starts filling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Trey, will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Why? Because, well, the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> Sayori, you completely misunderstood. I didn't like this for you. Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Ah, I broke my pencil. She hastily bends down to pick up the piece that she dropped. But being inattentive to her surroundings, she bumps right into me. Sorry. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sayori clutches the desk behind her to support herself. Using knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down. Yeah. I grab Sari's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh! Forgot about that. It's not as good as yours. Geez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Yep. Yep. This is the one that made me start to worry about Sayori. Click. Holy crap. Did you really write this? Of course I did. Oh wait, never mind. The rest of this is the same. Uh, I would definitely walk with Sayori. 
You really think I would ditch you for Yuri? But she's so beautiful and smart. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like long homes together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Trey. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so. Sorry, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure it out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? The conversation trails off. This is your best one so far. It's really, really nice, Trey. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Zura, you've been a little quiet today. Is everything alright? Eh, of course. Everything is fine. Maybe I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Do you want a nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles on your face. Alright. Hey, Trey. I'm still a little surprised. I really thought that you would try writing your poems like the way Yuri does. Or even Natsuki. But in the end... Yeah. I guess you're the one who likes th this the most. Why? You don't want to get closer with everyone else? Wait. Of course I do. But that doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Aori. I know you have to sometimes put up with me. And I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something. And this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only exciting thing in my life. Sometimes it's just easier to write when I'm thinking about you. Aori? I know. Ray, I don't deserve this. You're too nice. Why are you doing this? She has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. If you have fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori. I glance around the room to make sure nobody's noticed. Sayori. I've probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. She shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. She finally gathers herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing, Trey. Just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry you had to see that. <laughs> I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles for every from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori. Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, she cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. No. Hey, this is the first time we've seen this. Beach. Marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth chaotically meets the surface under a clear blue sky and expanse of bliss, but beneath gray rolling clouds an endless enigma, the easiest wood to get lost in is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sand castle where the sand is wet. But where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same, yet we still build sand castles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempting my f by tempted by foamy tendrils. Turn back, and I abandon my peace to a road at the shore. Drift forward, and I return to Earth forevermore. I'll be your beach. <sighs> Alright, depending on how that sounds, I just know it's capsule song. Depending on how that sounds, that might be needed to be censored. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place to I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap. In a way you thought I had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a sand, a pile of sand. Bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail. Set you free in my windy sail. And remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way... You thought it had left you long ago, but if you let me 
by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. I mean, <coughs> if it's going to be anyone, I'd prefer helping Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors and... But Monica said... Monica said that Sayori was helping her. Jeez, do you really hate us that much? No. Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Uh... I'll help Monica! Should probably be helping Monica. Yay, you picked me! Hold on a second. Yeah! Monica, you're the one who needs the least help out of all of us. But I agree with that, Suki. Not only is your work already the most suitable for one person, but you already have Sayori as well. But Trey was the one who... Uh... That doesn't matter. You were the one who scared him into picking you in the first place. You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to make responsible decisions. You shouldn't let any ulterior motives interfere with this decision. Ulterior motives? What are you saying? In fact, it sounds like you guys are the ones with ulterior motives. Excuse me? Otherwise, this wouldn't have been made into such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false. Yeah. We have a lot of work to do, you know. We won't do as good a job if you make us work alone. Maybe that's true. Think of the club, Monica. You want our event to succeed. <laughs> I should have been reading in the voice. Then we need to appropriately distribute our resources. So you're gonna do the right thing, President? I'll, I get it. It's technically logical for Trey to help out one of you two. So I guess that's what we'll do. I don't like the way her eyes are peeking over Natsuki. I'm, I think I'm gonna go with Yuri. Alright, well, uh, I've actually already read this part. Even though I would have preferred to do this with Sayori, my anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess we've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, but who knows what might end up when we're outside of school. She even told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel so nervous that, uh, that Sayori finds out about this? It's not like we feel that way about each other. Besides, like Monica said, this is about the club. Alright, this is how I'm going to end off this little episode as we got back to where we are supposed to where she says her heart feels like it's splitting in half this is where we shall end off of this video where next week we shall continue and reach the end probably maybe not i don't know hopefully reach the end of doki doki literature club this is cheeseburger jesus signing out Bye bye